I'm Lindsay Smith with RealAgriculture.com. I'm joined today by Eric Lund. He's the president of Veris Technologies. Uh, what are we standing in front of? We're standing in front of a Veris MSP3. That's a mobile sensor platform that senses uh, soil uh, electrical conductivity, soil organic matter, and soil pH. Now, so for someone who's not familiar with the Veris, what exactly does this machine do? This machine allows you to do precision agriculture based on, on those properties. So it, it creates very accurate, precise, detailed maps of texture, organic matter, and pH, which allows you to do a number of site-specific uh, precision ag applications, from variable rate seeding to variable rate lime to variable rate irrigation, just a number of things that you can vary based on those soil properties. Now this machine, as you said, it's got sensors to uh, pick up EC, organic matter, and pH of the soil. Um, now it spits out a reading mm -hmm. and creates this map. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a bit of confusion though what that reading means right. and how you sort of have to uh, calibrate it to certain right. tests. Right. So walk right. me through that. Well so originally soil electrical conductivity, which, which we've been making for nearly 20 years, um, was just a, a relative reading. It was, a, it was a electrical millisiemen per meter that was a unit of measure. And so that was relative within a field. It showed the heavy soil and the light soil within a field, but you couldn't take that reading of 20 millisiemen per meter, take it to another field that maybe read 20, and have those be the same because soil moisture, soil temperature, time of year, a number of factors uh, varied with that. So what we've begun doing with this machine, because we're measuring multiple soil properties, is we're taking laboratory samples in the field, four or five laboratory samples per field, analyzing for uh, cation exchange capacity or soil texture, organic matter and pH and, and buffer pH, and then we're calibrating the sensor readings to those numbers. So that, that turns that raw sensor value into a, a real number that really means something across a a farmer's farm across a, a, a consultant's uh, trade territory, that type of thing. It's a real, it's a real soil number. Now, but it does mean though that a farmer, say, or, or an agronomist who looks at a map with readings from one farm versus another can't correlate the two. They're really values that correlate to the, the soil samples that are taken in each field. No, actually he can. I mean, that's the idea. When you calibrate this field and it becomes an organic matter of 3% and 6%, you can, ca you can compare how did a hybrid or a, a nitrogen treatment do on another farm 10 miles away that's got a 3% and a 6% organic matter. It's that we've created, we've uh, calibrated to a number that means something across, across the, the, the fields. Right, now so you, you also walked uh, through earlier today uh, at the field tour that we're at, you walked through the role that topography also mm -hmm. plays, mm -hmm. uh, whether something is mm -hmm. concave mm -hmm. or convex mm -hmm. or slope. Um, and you relate this back to, because of course everything comes down to how we use this information, mm -hmm. back to say nitrogen management. Mm -hmm. So um, how then are you using these readings and the maps that they create mm -hmm. to delineate areas of nitrogen loss? Right. So nitrogen will be lost through leaching, through, through coarse sandy soil, through soils that are, that are uh, knoll shaped or sloping. Um, nitrogen will be lost in, through denitrification in heavy, poorly drained, heavy clay, uh, uh, soils that are bowl shaped. So if you have organic matter and texture and, and topography, you can identify where on the field do you have soils that are candidates for leaching and soils that are candidates for denitrification. So then rather than going out there with a soil probe and taking soil pr probes all over the field and trying to figure out, do I have enough nitrogen? You can go right to the spots where you may have lost nitrogen. Once you know you've not lost in those highly susceptible spots, then you can be more confident that you've got enough nitrogen in the rest of the spots as well. All right, and so what do you envision then for farmers who um, say are, are using this? Are you, is this something you would do once in a lifetime? Because these are parameters that don't change a lot. Really, the only parameter that would change over time with this machine uh, is, uh, is pH. PH typically is done multiple times. Um, you know, with our, with manuring and and uh, land land leveling, land forming, some of the other properties may change as well. But likely, it's pH that will need to be run again. All right. Now let's take a look uh, okay. at some of the as we've talked about the variability, the three components that you're measuring. What do we have here? Okay. So the field that we're on here today uh, was we I, I went out with the various maps and uh, the various maps identified areas that said, uh, for example, this soil, the map said this is uh, 
coarse textured, not real coarse, but coarser than, than clay, but very high organic matter. And, you know, I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but it's, it's, it's a peat soil. So the map identified that, that property. But also in this field, there were identified uh, areas of heavy clay and lower organic matter. And so, you know, this soil, definitely you can tell by new ribbon, ribbon the soil out. It is definitely heavier clay. And uh, you, have, you can see in the camera, but it's also lower organic matter. Still high organic matter compared to where I'm from in Kansas, but, but lower relative to, to the peat soil. So once you identify these, these soil parameters, then you can begin managing many inputs based on what would you, you know, how would you put nitrogen on this clay differently than how would you put nitrogen on a 30% organic matter peat soil. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Eric. You're welcome.